Hi, welcome to the Gear Garage. I'm a Zach. This is my little internet show about white water stuff. And today I want to try to answer the question, what raft should I buy? I get asked that question like once a day this time of year, and I'm going to do my very best to answer on this video. These are my biased opinions about the best rafts. And I think in all of my videos, a lot of times there's great comments in the comment section down below. For those of you that have different thoughts or experiences, please add a comment. And I feel like those of you looking to buy a raft, watch the video, but then read through the comments because there's a lot of good feedback and thoughts in the comment section. So with that said, here are my biased opinions about the best rafts. I think most of you should get a 16 foot raft. I think 16 foot is a boat that could be a paddle boat, but also it runs as a really nice gear boat for a large variety of things. You know, some of the new 16s come with four thwarts. Again, so you can put paddlers in there if you want, but it's a great size for gear boating. And the two 16 foot boats I recommend are the Wing 16 foot Surge. That's the name of it, S-E-R-G. I, I like that boat because I designed it, right? I based it off of the Avon Pro, just the classic workhorse Avon boat. And I really like the geometry, the valve placement, the D-rings, and Wing just makes a solid boat. It's expensive. It's probably one of the most expensive boats out there. So, you know, it's a long-term investment, a boat that will last you a long time, but it's also not cheap. Uh, if, you want, if you're watching your pocketbook and want something a little bit different, I'd go with the High Side 16 XT Pro or Pro XT, whatever it is. It's a great boat. I've never run it, but I have friends that have it that swear by it. And I just look at the geometry and how they place the D-rings and a few other things. And I can just tell that boat was designed by boaters for boaters. You know, and, and this is a decision between Hypalon and Urethane that I have a lot. The Urethane is going to be more durable, at least it is my experience. It's, uh, but it's also going to flip a little bit easier, but be less likely to wrap, right? Where the urethane, or the, I'm sorry, the Hypalon boat, the, the uh, high side, will probably be more likely to wrap, less likely to flip. I mean, those boats have a little give, and so when they hit a wave, they, they, they twist a little bit, so less likely to flip. The, the, it'll be way easier to roll. And so if, the, if, you're, if you have a trailer, in my mind, I would go with the urethane boat, right? Where if you're rolling your boat a lot because you don't have a trailer, you're putting the back of your car or your truck, I'd go with the high side. Those wing boats don't roll really well. And they're most likely to get holes when you're transporting because the, the folds end up rubbing against something. So it's, it's a lot of trade-offs here. But again, if you have a trailer, you want top of the line, go with the wing. If you don't, the high side is a great boat and Hypalon's a great material. So that's my, my general answer. Let me, I want to get into some details. Uh, the first thing is people ask me whether to buy new or used. And I mean, this is like anything like cars, houses, everything, right? Like if you buy new, you maybe lose a little bit of value when you drive it off a lot. And, that, and that's possible. I think the advantages of new are that you, you know, you, you know what's happened to the boat. If you buy a used boat, somebody could have beat it up pretty bad. You don't know that. And you also get a great warranty that they lasts a long time. And so I'm, I'm a fan of new, but again, like, you know, if you don't have the money for new, then, then get it used. Right? I think with everything, especially rafts, you get what you pay for. So if you spend more money, you're going to get something that lasts longer and is better. If you're trying to save money, you're not going to get what's exactly right and it's not going to last quite as long. So that's, that's the debate. And again, if you can afford it, I think going with new is really nice. Uh, I think when you're looking at new boats, there's, there's three main options. The first one is, are the US made brands. This is the Wing, the Air, Sotar, Moravia, Jack's Plastic. Um, they're all well made. They have good warranties. They have repair centers here in the US. Uh, I just, you know, I think that if you can afford it, getting an American made boat is great. And those are all great brands. Uh, the next thing to think about if you want to get Hypalon, Hypalon isn't really made in the US anymore. So your two main options here are NRS or High Side. And, you know, they're both, you know, they're both pretty similar. They have similar designs. They're, you know, the designs are, you know, they're different, but they're, you might like one or the other. Durability, you know, people go back and forth about which one is more durable, and they have different customer service, you know, and, 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 and you know, NRS is a big company with a lot of people, high tide's a little smaller, the customer service is just different. So it kind of depends on, on what you want, or maybe just the brand, what brand you want to associate with. But they're both good boats, and again, if you're rolling them a lot, I highly recommend uh, either the high side or the NRS Hypalon boats. And the last thing are the, the boats that are made overseas that are PVC. This is like the Air Tributary Line, Rocky Mountain, uh, Vanguard. Uh, there's a few others I'm not thinking of. 
but these are lower quality boats. The designs are good, but I think over time, they're not gonna last that long. They don't have a long lifespan. And I'm sure the people that, work, that run those companies are gonna disagree with me and leave me comments and say, no, they last forever. In my experience with those boats, they don't last a long time. And so the prices are really good. And so if that's all you can afford, it's a boat and you'll love it. But if you're thinking about the long-term value, um, you know, that may not be your choice. It's kind of up to you. You could buy two, bo two boats of these, of these less expensive boats over the life of a wing, but I'm a big fan of like not throwing things away, of like buying something bomber to start with and having it have a long life cycle. And that's just like being like environmentally conscious and whatever. So, so if that's all you can afford, cool. And I know they make some great boats, all those brands, those, those internationally made PVC boats, they do make some great boats. So those are your main choices for materials. I think for, you know, you're gonna buy a boat depending on what you wanna do. And so if you're gonna R2, first of all, there's, a, there's the uh, high side mini max is sweet. If you wanna be adventurous in a little 10 and a half foot boat, I have a lot of friends that have the high side mini max. I want one, they just look fun, you know. The same thing, Air just came out with the Cub. It's another 10 and a half foot boat that's like small boat uh, series. They're super cool. I'd recommend checking those out. If your goal is to R2, like more class five and steep drops, those are a little small for that. So I would check out Air's 13 foot boats. I think for R2ing personally, Air is the way to go. I don't think there's a whole lot of competition out there. Um, Air's just got it dialed for R2 boats especially. And they're thir whether it's the 13 foot R or the 13 foot D, whatever, the 13E, they're all really good boats, especially for R2ing. Once you work up into like straight paddle boating, like let's say you just want a paddle boat only, no, no frame, you know, you want to go with a 14 foot boat, probably maybe a 13 or a 14. Sotar has some nice paddle boats. Uh, Wing has some paddle boats, of course. And um, I think that every company has some sort of 14 foot paddle boat. And then finally, you know, most people looking to buy boats that I talk to want a gear boat. And, you know, the decision is between 15 foot, 16 foot, 18 foot, whatever. I just personally think that 16 foot is the best overall size for a large variety of things. So if you're thinking about doing the Grand Canyon, you know, an 18 is better, but a 16 no foot will work. Or if you want to do the Tuolumne in California, an 18 is not going to work there for sure. You, you know, a 16 will. 16 is sort of like a jack of all trades and it's a boat you'll be using for a long time. So it's a good long-term investment. It's a good boat for a lot of different things. And, you know, with gear boats, the, to me, the gold standard is, is can you get it down the middle fork at low water? I mean, that's what everybody wants to do is like the middle fork of the salmon at like 1.7 feet. And, and everybody thinks smaller boats are the way to go. And, and I disagree. I think that having a bigger boat is a really good thing. And when you think about having the same amount of gear in a 14 foot boat and an 18 foot boat, the 14 foot boat will fit through narrower chutes, but the 18 foot boat will sit higher in the water. And on the middle fork specifically, if you have the technical skills, to maneuver the 18 foot boat, you'll have way more success because you won't be getting stuck on all those lower rocks under the water. Where a heavily loaded 14 will just be constantly getting stuck on shallow rocks. And so I would personally choose the largest boat you can row technical water in. And for most people, again, that's the 16. And so, um, you know, the, it's up to you what you get, but I'm gonna really stand by my decision to go, you know, most of you, wanting to roam multi-days, you know, the 16 is a boat you'll, you'll have for a long time. So that's it, that's all I have on, on rafts. Again, if you have anything to add, please do. I love getting feedback. I learn a ton from the comments. I know I say that a lot, but I really do. And for those of you that are looking at buying boats, I hope this helped and, and take some time to read through the comments because I bet there'll be some really good ones about different sizes, brands, things that maybe said that people disagree with. Um, the, the comments are a really good chance to sort of, sort of share your opinions. So that's it for this episode. See you next time.